There is a certain mischievous quality to the question, is Paul McCartney a good bass player? Not unlike asking if Michelangelo was any good with a chisel. Of course, Sir Paul McCartney was a member of the Beatles, arguably the most influential band in the history of popular music, and as such, his reputation as a bass player is almost overshadowed by his immense contributions as a songwriter and vocalist. But today, let's delve into Paul's bass playing abilities and techniques, which have proved to be just as vital to his lasting legacy. It is important to note that McCartney, who was left-handed, initially wasn't the bassist for the Beatles. It was only after the departure of Stuart Sutcliffe that he reluctantly picked up the bass guitar. McCartney's approach to bass playing was largely shaped by his experience as a guitarist and pianist. This is one of the reasons why his bass lines often carry a melodic quality. His left-handedness also made for a unique playing style. McCartney's technique was idiosyncratic and broke away from the traditional rhythm section role. This can be seen in songs like All My Loving, where his bass line forms a moving counter melody to the main tune. Another iconic example is the syncopated bass line in I Want You, She's So Heavy, that creates a haunting undertow beneath Lennon's screaming guitar. With the Beatles and later as a solo artist, McCartney pioneered what is known as lead bass. One shining example is Silly Love Songs, where the catchy, repetitive bass line is arguably the song's lead instrument. In comparing McCartney to other notable rock bass players, it's essential to discuss his contemporaries like John Entwistle of The Who or Jack Bruce of Cream. Entwistle, known for his fast, aggressive playing, and Bruce, famed for his heavy blues influence, both had distinctive styles. But where McCartney truly stands out is in his ability to serve the song. His bass lines were crafted with an instinct for what the song needed, rather than showcasing his virtuosity. His innovative melodic sense distinguished him from even skilled bassists like the Rolling Stones' Bill Wyman or Led Zeppelin's John Paul Jones. McCartney's approach went beyond keeping rhythm and ventured into melodic territory, making the bass a central component of the Beatles' sound. In the realm of progressive rock, Chris Squire of Yes and Giddy Lee of Rush took the concept of lead bass even further, but McCartney's influence in this regard is undeniable. His approach opened the door for bass to become more than just a rhythm instrument, paving the way for these and other innovators. When it comes to ranking, it's important to understand that bass playing, like any other form of musicianship, isn't just about technical skill. It's about how effectively a musician uses their instrument to contribute to the overall sound of a piece of music. In this regard, McCartney is undoubtedly one of the greatest. His ability to craft memorable, innovative bass lines that serve the song, combined with his melodic sensibilities and distinctive playing style, make him an all-time great. And while McCartney may not display the technical prowess of a Jaco Pastorius or the rhythmic inventiveness of a James Jamerson, his contributions to the bass guitar's role in popular music cannot be overstated. So, is Paul McCartney a good bass player? No, he's not just good, he's one of the greats. Not because he was the fastest or the most intricate player, but because he changed our understanding of what a bass could do within the context of a song. And that, in itself, is a mark of true greatness.